Hey guys, so I wanted to do a quick lesson on the expectations of the EOC. And so I'm going to show you the rubrics and I'm sure you see them in your notebooks, but I want to go over them so that we could talk about how you should answer um, these prompts on the test. Um, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to do a rewrite on your two pretests and therefore I'm not going to give you the direct responses. Um, to the prompts that I gave each class. And I will say each class got different responses. And the reason why I'm not gonna do that is because I want you to be able to apply what I'm telling you here and apply the rewrites and then get a better score. Okay, so um, the expectation for B, I didn't do the grammar part and the spelling because I feel like that's something we can work on individually and one one-on-one. Um, and also it's something that I expect you guys to be working on period throughout your education here. Um, so the criteria which I graded you on were the first three. Okay, so we have established argument one and established argument two and select and use evidence. Okay, so to get a to get six points in established argument row one. Um, they ask you to identify the response identifies a theme or issue connecting the provided sources and presents a perspective that is not represented in one of the sources or brings a particularly insightful approach to one of the perspectives, excuse me, or makes one or makes a strong thematic connection among perspectives. Okay. So what it's asking you to do is come up with a thematic link. Um, but it had to be something that was very insightful or doesn't even reference what was in the quotes. A lot of students reference what was in the quotes, and that's fine, but that's not going to get you a six, okay? Um, you probably got a response. The response identifies a theme or issue that connects the sources. The response derives its perspective from either one, only one source. So it's either that you got a four, it means you use only one quote um, to get your theme, or basically it was obvious okay so it was obvious that you got the theme if you got a two it means you didn't really get what the thematic connection was or you misstated or or miss you know whatever that's fine all right so establish argument two um to get a six you needed to uh the response needed to have a line of reasoning that is logically organized and well developed the commentary explains the evidence and connects it to the claims clearly, convincingly, establish, um, and convincingly establishes an argument, okay? To get a six, you literally had to explain um, why these things um, were connected to whatever your argument was about the, uh, the perspective about your theme, okay? And you need to give a claim, then provide evidence, and then give other claims and explain why all those claims were connected and also uh, basically supported your argument. So you had to do all that and put it plainly, okay? Um, if you didn't do that, it was mostly clear or you kind of organized or you didn't really connect them or you didn't really explain, then you got a four. If it doesn't make sense at all, it was disorganized and there really was no connection, you got a two. If you didn't do any of this, you could still get a zero on any of these okay i know it doesn't say but you can get a zero um to get a six on select and use evidence uh you had to have a response that appropriately synthesizes which means it uses the sources collectively um relevant information drawn from at least two of them okay uh so it had to have it had to use the the sources in tandem and it had to be at least two um and it develops and supports a strong argument. So again, you had to have those things connected and you had to have a claim and use this quotes as evidence to support your argument, okay? Or if you had other outside information, you could have used that too. Um, to get a four, you had to accurately use relevant information from at least, again, two, um, and provide sources to support, okay? So it, it may be that um, your argument is not as compelling it's not as strong it it basically states the obvious or something like that um, so have a two 
um, again, there's some still some misinterpretation or um, you don't use two, okay? And again, you can't get a zero, all right? So let's look at the little example I typed up here. So remember the pretest B, here's the um, directions. Um, the following four quotes, excuse me, I meant to say quotes, uh, present multiple perspectives on the same issue or topic. Um, read the sources carefully, focusing on both the thematic connection between them and the different perspectives each pre represents. Then write logic, a, a logically organized and well-reasoned argument that presents your own perspective on the thematic link you identify. You must incorporate at least two of the quotes provided. You may also use the other provided sources or draw upon your own knowledge. In your response, refer to the provided sources as source A, source B, source C, or source D, or by the author's name, okay? So I took four quotes, and it's, a reader lives a thousand lives before he dies, um, said Jojen. The man who never reads lives only one. The second quote says, <clears throat> the more you that you read, the more things will you, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, the more that you read, the more things you will know. And the more that you learn, the more places you'll go. From Dr. Seuss. Um, the other one was George R.R. R. Martin. Martin. Um, the third quote, do, do not read as children do to amuse yourself or like the ambitious for the purpose of instruction. No, read in order to live. Fourth quote, you think your pain and your heartbreak are unprecedented in the history of the world, but then you read. It was books that taught me that the things that tormented me the most were the very things that connected me with all the people who were alive and who had ever been alive. Okay, so we can come up with general themes. I could easily say it has something to do with reading, but to get something like a six, I have to come up with something insightful. So what could I come up with? What would be insightful? Well, I could say something like, If reading Okay, so reading is a path, is a pathway, this is one word, sorry, is a pathway to seeing and learning about the people around us. It is the path of empathy and self-discovery. Okay, that's insightful, okay? Now, I do talk about reading, um, and technically, a reader could give me a four, but I think it is something that um, I've added a little bit of insight because I've talked about being a path to learning about people and um, empathy and self-discovery, okay? Now, um, why do I say that? Well, I could pick any of these quotes. I could say um, James Baldwin's quote is a good example of self-discovery. I can say um, these three quotes here are more about learning about people. Um, then I could say um, this one here, the first one, J, J, uh, J, G, I'm sorry, I always mess up his name, even though I love Game of Thrones. George R. R. Mer Martin also Coincidentally, he also wrote a, a old series that I used to love, Beauty and the Beast. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, a reader lives a thousand lives, okay? And that could be something about self-discovery as well, okay? So those are things I can do, okay? And how do I explain that? I explain how those things address those parts of my thesis. So I can say James Baldwin's quote answers self-discovery because you think about yourself as this this entity that has experienced everything nobody else has and then you start to realize you're just a small part of the world and that's self-discovery um george R. R. martin when he says you live a thousand lives well when you experience different lives you you start to think of things differently and again that's self-discovery 
And that also, when you live a thousand lives, that creates empathy because you're in someone else's shoes. So that is me explaining and giving a line of reasoning and logic and evidence that ties in my reasoning. Okay. Um, a pathway to seeing and learning people around us. Okay. Um, so the more things you read, the more things you'll know. Um, so I have that there. That's clear. And the more that you learn, the more places you'll go. Okay. So pathway, that's a good example. And it's, and it's a way of doing that. And then do not read to amuse yourself and for the purpose to live, okay? And so to live is to learn and experience, okay? So I can add all those things as reasons and those would answer um, my question, okay? And so I just, that would be in my response. And those things <laughs> synthesize and add all those posts together. So I could get easily an 18, doing that now if i have perfect grammar that's another um i believe six points or two points so i think it's 20. um so that's the way you could get your uh your 18 points for the pretest make sure that you are being insightful make sure you are using the quotes effectively make sure you are creating a line of reasoning that uses the evidence and connects it back to your thesis if it doesn't do that then you're not going to get a higher score because the point of it is if you're making an argument you have to back it up okay um another thing i noticed you guys are always talking about if you agree or disagree with quotes nowhere is that important it really just wants you to do what it says it wants you to use the quotes find the thematic connection um give your perspective on that thematic connection and then use the quotes to support your your argument, okay, about that perspective and the thematic link, okay? And those are things that you guys can do and those are things that we're working on. So be sure that you're doing that. Now, if you need individual help with it, please come by during tutorials and I will work with you one-on-one, -on -one, okay? Thank you.